What's up guys? So today I want to talk about feeding. Talk about power feeding, feeding for breeding, versus feeding for pets, and what my feeding schedule is. What's going on guys? I know I say that all the time, but it is what it is. It's Baker. Welcome back to Blue Line Morse. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up. Hit me up on Instagram, blue underscore line underscore morphs, and Facebook, blue line morphs. I have the link down below in the notes section. Enough of that. So, with that being said, guys, uh, today's video is going to be a battle about feeding. I want to talk about like power feeding, whether it's good, whether it's bad, signs of power feeding, feeding your hatchlings, feeding your your breeder females, feeding your breeder males, or then what's the difference between feeding for feeding for breeding, or then feeding for just having a pet as a ball python? Because not everybody watching this channel is going to you know want to be breeding. That being said, African Swallfers are doing great over here. Again, thank you, Claire. Big Mama's Clutch is looking great. It is on day 42. So probably in two weeks, I'll be doing a cutting for that. I'm excited for that. Hopefully everything turns out well. Who knows, maybe Big Mama's head pie to get a couple of pies. That would be pretty cool. So back to that giveaway I've mentioned a few times. I'm really close to getting the 4,000 watched hours. Uh, I think you only need, I don't know, less than 100, whatever the case may be. Once I hit that, I'm gonna do a full video, like monetization, like uh, giveaway for that pastel male. If you guys haven't seen him, he wants to bite me. This is him right here, he's a little older. Um, he's gorgeous, he just shed, sweet as can be. That being said, he did strike me the other day, but he was hungry, not a big deal. I'm gonna be shipping him out to somebody uh, that follows me on Instagram, follows me on YouTube, follows me on Facebook, so forth and so on, once I make that 4,000 watched hours. So let's get right into this. If you don't know what power feeding is, essentially it's trying to get your snake to eat as much as possible, as quickly as possible, which my opinion on power feeding is as long as it's not detrimental to the snake, I don't see an issue with that. I don't mean cramming food down his throat. What I mean is you have to watch uh, the snake to see how the snake is doing. For example, this girl right here, I kind of put on a quick little diet. Uh, she hasn't eaten in two weeks, and that's because of me. Uh, she was, this is my pastel Enchi pie girl. She went from probably 700 grams to like 1,200 grams really quickly. She started getting a little chubby on me. She started to lean out a little bit more, so I'll probably put her back on food starting next week. But as long as you watch your snake and you see that they're doing well, and they don't get too round, too puffy, and it's almost like they can't even move around their tub, I don't see a problem with keep giving them food. If they eat and they take it, they give it to them. Just monitor what they look like and use your sense of judgment to see if you know what, this thing's getting a little chubby, I need to cut her back. So let me go over my feeding schedule. So I have different feeding schedules according to how big the snake is, according to what I'm trying to do with the snake. So, first and foremost, when it comes to my big girls, like Big Mama over here, right? Big Mama said at 2,600 grams. Oh, sorry, no, she's bigger now. She's about 2,900 grams now. She's putting that baby weight back on. She lost about 1,100 grams when she uh, dropped that on the clutch over there. She's about 500 grams she recovered so far. So when it comes to her, snakes her size, and all my other females that get ready for, for a breeding season, they're all about anywhere from, right now, 1,100 to 2,700 grams. So those nine girls I'm trying to get ready. So what I do is, every weekend I go over to Country Critters, and I buy, I'm not going to show you, but I have a couple of rats left over. I buy uh, their smalls, which is really like mediums for other people. They're about 90 to 110 grams. And I feed one of those to those snakes, those girls I'm getting ready for breeding season, every Saturday. Now... On hand in my freezer, I also keep small crawler frozens. I will offer, my, for my breed girls running already, I will offer a small or very small crawler about that big, only about 35 to 45 grams every Wednesday also. So my breed females, what I, what I do is as long as they don't start getting chubby like that pastel empty girl, I cut her off for two weeks so she kind of leans out and gets a little better. But I try to feed one rat that's about a, a, a 100 grams or small, if you will, live on Saturday. Then around Wednesday, I try to feed another small crawler. As long as they take it, they take it. They don't take it, they don't take it. Not a big deal. And I've seen really good growth spurts with that. I've seen a lot of my girls go from 800 to 1200 grams relatively quickly in three to four months. I try to put on about 100 grams, 120 grams on my girls once they hit about six, 120 grams, give or take, per month once they hit that 600 gram mark. Because I've noticed when they get to about 600 grams, they can start taking bigger rats and lead to bigger growth spurts. Um, one thing I didn't cover, I'll backtrack real quick, is what I do is I look for the thickness of the snake, right? We all know this. The thickness of the snake, the thickest part of the snake is how big or how thick that rat can be. Now, the only thing I'm going to caution about is Big Mama can take down bigger rats than 90 to 110 grams. But once you start getting to these 150, 200 gram rats, it's like a battle in there, right? These, these rats have big teeth, and the bigger they get, the more nasty they get. So I do... Once she gets to the point where I, I feel comfortable with her taking out large rats, I'll probably switch over to just a frozen thaw. But she'll probably get that on Saturday, and then on Wednesday, she'll get that other one. 
So, when it comes to my girls or my snakes that are sitting at, uh, well, I'll cover males in a second. When it comes to my snakes that are sitting at like 250 grams, all the way up to about 400, 500, 600 grams, I tend to feed them once a week or twice a week depending. So there's two ways I do this. When I have girls like this girl right here, this is my, this is my Orange Dream Fire 100% Head Puzzle Girl. She's sitting about 320 grams right now. She looks beautiful, right? I don't know if you guys really have seen her out of shed, but look how nice she is. She looks great. So what I'll do is on Saturday, for girls this size, about 250 to 500 to 600 grams, I'll feed them a crawler that's about 41 to 40 grams to about 55 grams. Essentially what I feed my breed-ready females, or the girls are getting ready for breed season, what I feed them as that midweek snack is what I give her every Saturday. Now... If she takes a pup during the week, then I'll feed her a pup. I'll always offer it twice a week. But most of the time, those girls, the, the one crawler per week that's around 40 to 50 grams, seems to fill them up all week. So I have no problem with that. Once they hit that six, 700, 800 gram mark, that's when I switch them over to that two, two feeding, the, the one large meal and slightly smaller meal feeding schedule. When it comes to my new snakes, my hatchlings, uh, when it comes, like you look at my, my, my three clown girls, I'll feed them once every four to five days. So I start off with mice or small hopper mice. And let's say it's it's Monday, I feed, let's throw, backtrack. So Saturday, I'll give them a mouse. Okay, small mouse, they eat it, cool, good to go. I give about four or five days, then I'll offer another mouse. So I try to feed them every four to five days, try to get them up to about 120 grams. Once they cross the 120 gram mark, I try to switch them over to pups. Now I know a lot of people keep them on pups or they start them off on, you know, uh, fuzzy rats right away. This is what I've been really working for me. I'd rather, they, they seem to take the mice much more easily and it's like crack for them. So I try to keep them on mice for the first month until they cross that 100 gram mark, just so I can get them up there more quickly rather than them like rejecting the pups for a couple weeks. And then, you know, that's just how it works for me. Once they get to 120 grams, I, uh, I feed them the pups. Now, if you look, I have my, my killer. Oh, sorry, honey, I forgot to put your hide back. This is my killer Enchi Blade Clown. I'm convinced she's got Enchi in her. All right, you guys have seen her a million times. She's beautiful. She's also super, super nasty. I got her about 135 grams. She's sitting at 320 right now. She did not get power fed. She looks great. And she was on that feeding schedule. So even though I set up 120, I gave him pups, I was giving her mice. Uh, for the first like two or three weeks I had her, she ate great, switched her over to pups. Once she crossed that 300 gram mark, 350 gram mark, I started giving her uh, slightly bigger uh, rats. I would say... Uh, more like crawlers, and she's really ballooned up really nicely, and she's doing it, and she's as healthy as can be. Now, you compare that to my Coral Glow Black Vestel Trick Mojave male, who's pulling the back, not gonna grab him. Um, when I got him from Richie Boo's Reptiles, Richie Boo's Pythons, I always forget. Last July, I was feeding him once a week with my other snakes. So now, at a year old, he's only about 740 grams. Great growth either way, I understand that. But if you look at my Killer Entry Blade Clown, because I'm feeding her once every five days, and now that she's on that crawler mark, um, she might get a crawler on Saturday, then like a small pup on Wednesday, she's got up to 320 grams really quickly. So had I had that Coral Glow Black Pastel Trick Mojave male on that same feeding schedule, I probably would have had him well over a thousand right now. And now again, I know people, I'm going to get a lot of shit for this because they're going to say I'm power feeding my snakes. I don't power feed them. Once they look like they're getting a little too chubby or they're putting too much weight on, I will tone it back. Now, I will tone it back. Now, I understand my goal for females is to get them as a hatchling is two years later to breed them. That's why That's why I feed them accordingly. I've spoken to a lot of, you know, reputable people. And they all kind of give me the same advice. That you can get a female ready in two years, a male in about, you know, Anywhere from six to ten months, realistically. But as long as it's not detrimental to the snake, the snake's going to take it, then why not give it to him? Um, so I do like to feed, let's just reiterate, my feeding schedule, just I was all over the place here. My big girls, I'll feed them a small live, about 120 grams, give or take rat. On Saturday, I'll offer a small frozen dog crawler, about 40 grams on Wednesday. My girls sit in between like 120 to like 300. I give a pup. Um, on Saturday and a pup on Wednesday. Once they cross over that 300 mark, I'll switch them over to crawlers on Saturday and offer a small pup on Wednesday. This is kind of how my feeding schedule uh, goes. Some steady RDOs, uh, regular days off, uh, Saturday, Sunday. When it comes to my new hatchlings, I feed them a small mouse every four to five days, depending as long as they take it. Once they cross over 100 to 110 grams, 120 grams, I will switch them over to rat pups and then eventually you feed them two rat pups. Once they hit that 300, then I switch over to that crawler and that pup per week. It's been working really well for me. My girl's been growing really nicely. Of course, you know, my, my pastel engine girl did put a little weight on, so I cut her off. 
and that's been going really good for me. It's been going. Uh, give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I normally can't shit saying I'm power feeding. I am not power feeding. Trust me. My snake's health is the most important thing to me. Let's go over my sheet real quick. All right. So the difference between feeding for pets and for breeding. All right. Honestly, it's just you don't feed them as much. So if you guys remember, I picked up those four snakes. My old biology teacher. Now when I got this girl right here. okay you're okay when I got this girl here he wasn't he's had her for like six years this is six-year-old female pie girl now she's about 1350 1370 grams so she's definitely ready next season when I got her from my old teacher she's only about 11 1200 grams so you put on 150 grams relatively soon now she was pretty small for a snake that somebody's had for six years so here's why he wasn't feeding her to breed her. He didn't intend on breeding her. He just liked pies. He always wanted a pie when they, they first like kind of came out. Um, and getting you know, people were really starting to breed them, but they were super expensive. Once he could get one, the price went down. He kind of bought one. I know it was six years ago, but that's when he got one. Um, she's probably hungry still. But she's been hammering rats for me. Now he did not feed her to breed her. So she was only 1,100, 1,200 grams, which is fine. She was healthy as can be. But he fed her one small rat every every 10 days or every two weeks, depending. Now, that's more of a maintenance diet. If you're on this channel because you like ball pythons, you want to keep a ball python, you're not trying to breed them, you're not trying to get them huge, you don't have to feed them like I feed them. You don't have to feed them once a week or twice a week, depending. There's no reason why you can't feed the snake once a week. Once it gets up, starts getting bigger, it's an adult, you can start feeding it you know, once every two weeks, one small rat, and you're good to go. It's more of a maintenance diet, more of a pet diet. So you don't really care if they're 1,500 grams to breed. You don't really care if they're 500 grams of the male to breed. It doesn't matter to you. Uh, I see nothing wrong with that. All four, uh, the two girls and the two boys that I got from him are all on that kind of pet diet and they're all were absolutely fine. With that being said, now that, they, now that I'm feeding them on my diet, uh, my feeding schedule, they're hammering rats, they're looking great, they're putting size on. So that's the difference between pets versus breeding, just simply how much you feed them. It's not a big deal as long as they don't get too skinny. If you have a pet snake and all of a sudden it's back, they start getting that, that triangle look to them and you know, their backbone starts popping up, you got to get some food into them, okay? It's that simple. If it gets too chubby, take them off the food. But that is my feeding schedule, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Um, it's been working really well for me. I love it. I'm gonna, I did a feed video yesterday that was posted on Saturday, today's Sunday. This is posted on Monday. So I have a couple of rats left over here. They're adorable. I feel terrible. A couple of my girls didn't eat, as you guys saw. So I'm going to put them back in there and give them another shot once the sun goes down in a couple hours. As always, guys, I appreciate it. Comment below. Let me know what you guys do, how you guys feed. As always, I appreciate it. Be safe. Always remember to watch your sex.